This is a course analysis of the Jumpers with Leaves course from Masters Jumpers with Leaves on Saturday at the Cactus State Mini Schnauzer Club EKC trial on Saturday, January 25th. If you want a downloadable copy of the course, I will post a link to a JPEG. The part of the course that's in discussion is the opening one through five. The dog's path, jump, jump, double, jump, jump. And so it's basically an S-shaped curve. The curves of this are here, and then there's another one here. The straight lines are between three and four, and then again after four, five to six. So people were handling this in various ways. Um, one of the things that I thought was interesting was the people that were choosing to put front cross in on the takeoff side of three, especially if they were too far inside the wing of three and standing still on a lead-out pivot or standing still and not moving quick enough after their dog started coming to them after two. If you take a still picture of the handler at the blue spot and the dog is starting to come up after two, the dog at this moment sees the handler stationary on the takeoff side of a jump. So the dog is right there, 50% of the way between jump two and three. And they're expecting that the handler wants them to jump number three in collection. So they slow down, um, probably change lead legs, and plan for a turn. Only all of a sudden, the handler says, nope, just kidding. We're really going straight. And then the dog has to change lead legs back if they've already changed, speed up if they can, adjust their path so they can get over jump four. Um, there were some people that did the front cross on the outside of the turn at number three and had it work great. They put their front cross clear of the wing and as close to the wing as possible and they started moving before the dog committed to take off at jump three and they showed their dog extension to four. So then the dog is jumping here, here, they see the handler start to move, they start to move or continue the same speed that they were on and they can definitely clear jump three and jump four, they have the information about where they're going next ahead of time. Some other ways to handle this. Well, and also one thing I wanted to mention is it does kind of suck to have this kind of handling at the start of a course if you don't have a good start line and you don't trust your dog's start line. You do need to have a solid stay and be able to give your dog to get up to do something at three that's going to be successful. This map, I've kind of edited it and cut it down just to make it fit on here. Um, there was plenty of room. There was a good 15, 20 feet between that first jump and the ring gate. So you could leave your dog here and you could lead out to wherever you wanted to be. As long as you trusted them, the dog knew that they were going jumps one, two, three. The problem was when people didn't have a lead out or they didn't trust their dog, they didn't get far enough ahead to do something after three. So they tried to plan to do it before three and then that's where it got all miscommunicated to the dog. A couple comments on my choice of handling. I did a blind cross between three and four since I wanted to show extension, I want my dog running. So I left my dog on a start line here. I think I did this with all three of my dogs. And so my dog is basically going to do a slingshot 
around here. I am basically running, releasing them off their sit stay. And I'm about here. Send a two. And then I did a blind between three and four because I wanted to show extension. So I'm at the 50% point between three and four ahead of my dog. My dog sees me as they're here starting to move that direction. I look over my shoulder, they come up here, and they're running full speed to get to five. Um, some of the problems with the handling I think also arose due to what you had to do after five. There's definitely a a threadle here, threadle-ish from six to seven, or a wrap, or at six, or whatever you want to call it. So some people, I think, were worried about getting up there. If that hadn't been the case, we probably would have seen more rear crosses between three and four, where the handler's basically allowing the dog to go ahead of them here, and they're going to rear cross, so the dog can travel ahead of them, dog or the handler rear crosses and goes up here. Problem is, um, people really wanted to get up in a location up here to show deceleration. So the rear cross is probably not the best maneuver if you're worried about getting a turn to the left on six to seven. So another option is if you have no start line, you have to do a rear cross, you know you're not gonna get up there for six, to get decel is why not do another rear cross? Keep the dog on your right. And oops, I'm drawing in circles. Pretty typical for me. And do another rear cross at six. So the dog turns to the right. I didn't see too many people go to the right there, but it actually made the angle to seven much nicer. And yeah, you're probably taking up more space and time, but if it keeps your dog going forward and I think that's a front cross and happy then that should definitely be a handling choice. I did that with my Valhoon because I didn't trust that he would turn six to seven tightly and stay happy. He did knock the bar at six. I was turning him into the ring rope so and who knows why he knocks bars all the time. And the ring rope was definitely way out here. You had plenty of room to go to the right. I heard other people discussing it. I don't know how many people actually did that, but definitely a handling option. Um, so the blind is a handling option. The rear cross is a handling option. And then you can also do a front cross on the landing side of three. And again, you have to trust that your dog is going to hold their start line and you can get up there. Um, people aren't comfortable with that, I don't think. They... I didn't see tons of those. I saw a few people do it, and it worked great. But the dog would basically be coming here, here, handler, here, front cross. And probably these people are actually not leaving their dogs there. They're probably leaving their dogs like on a starling here. So they're running this kind of path, front cross, and then they can get up to where they need to go. When you're trying to choose which path for your dog to take, it does depend on where they're going next and where they're coming from. It also is going to be dependent on your handling style and the best options for your dog and what you can execute the best, which is different for everybody. I think that a best chosen plan and handling style should keep your dog fast and happy. The goal of agility is to run with your dog and if you are accidentally colliding into your dog or shutting your dog down or asking them to change lead legs twice and less than 10 feet or some other options like that that it's not very fun or happy for the dog. So continue to think about ways that you can keep your dog in extension and show them where they're going next ahead of time and continue to have fun with your dog.